Welcome back to Podiatry Marketing Podcast. I'm Jim McDaniel, your host, along with Tyson Franklin. Tyson, how are things going today? I'm fantastic. Jim, how have you been going over in, oh, up and across in Canada? <laughs> oh, things are good here in Canada. Yeah, it's, I guess we're getting to the, the middle to end of summertime. You know, things are good. It's back to school here in Canada with kids, so no complaints whatsoever. You know, somebody said to me once, there's no point complaining because if you do complain, 50% of people don't care. And the other 50% are happy that you've got complaints as well. Because they're, everyone thinks that everybody else is, it's grass is always greener on the other side of the fence and that nobody else has problems or concerns. So I, I just think, yeah, whatever's going on in your life, no matter what's happening, there's somebody else who is probably doing it worse. So don't complain. Isn't that in the Bible about someone complained about not having shoes until they saw someone that didn't have feet? Yeah, there's always stuff you can complain about, right? But I've got my help. Uh, my family's healthy and you know, I just spent the summer back with my parents for a bit. Life is good and I try to keep on the sunny side of things as much as you can. I think so. And that's why we do this podcast is to, when people listen to us, not only to learn some marketing stuff, but hopefully we, we cheer them up along the way to put a bit of a smile on their face. Oh, that's right. We do a market, but I do marketing podcast. I thought we that's it. We do. About. That's why we're here. I know sometimes <laughs> we forget we're actually recording. We just go off on a tangent. Yeah. So speaking of that, what are we going to be talking about today, Tyson? So today's topic is something that I've done a, a workshop a couple of times. I do it for a dental group. I've done it for a podiatry organization. So after anyone hears us today, if they say, oh, I'd love to hear the whole workshop, just reach out to me and I can come in and talk to your group. So we're going to talk about creating headlines to attract the right podiatry patients, which is really I think important. That, no, that is hugely important. I think as someone who does a lot of writing myself, maybe I didn't realize it as much while I was in practice, but a killer headline, a subject line of an email, or just the headline, that the, the wording that's put onto your website can really position a potential patient to, to trust you and gives you a, a, an opportunity to make an impression on somebody. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your, your thoughts on how to create and write great headlines. The part that a lot of people don't realize is one wrong word can attract the wrong patient. And to give a perfect example, it could be the difference between the word premium or the word budget. So you might have a headline that says, oh, five premium ways to such and such. Or you might go, oh, yeah, five budget tips or five premium tips. Now, depending on how you use that word, there's going to be certain patients out there that when they hear the word premium, they go, yes, that's definitely me. I always like a premium service. Or if somebody hears the word budget, they're going, yeah, that's for me because I'm price conscious. So it's really important to understand that the patient is actually making a buying decision sometimes basically on the words that you use. And a good headline can help a patient, can actually work out for a patient if they're a good fit for your business or not. Yeah, we've talked about that a little bit in the past, right? Kind of finding those right fit patients for your practice. And like you said, word selection is hugely important there. Are you going to find somebody that's budget? The words like budget and cheap will attract yeah. a certain type of clientele. And premium, like high quality, different things like that will definitely attract a different type of person to your practice. So it's all, what seems like a small word choice can have a huge impact on the type of patients that come to your practice. It has a massive thing. And they reckon that five times more people will read the headline without even reading the body of the text. So they'll, they'll read the headline. They may even read just the first paragraph and they've already made their decision that this is probably the place I want to go to. Putting the wrong word in the headline can really, but the whole idea of it is to attract and repel people really quick. And also it takes, it, it makes them realize that yeah, this is or is not the place that I want to go to. Yeah, it helps them self-select, right? They're looking, when people are jumping onto a new website or new webpage uh, about a, a clinic or a practice, they're trying to see whether or not that's the right place for them. And if you have the right messaging with the right wording and the right word selection, then it, it's powerful for attracting people. Like you also said, though, it can be powerful for not repelling, but just like people realize it's, that's not the right place for them. They'd rather not uh, go to a place that is about budget or cheap or, or maybe they just, that, that's what they're looking for. So there's, like you said, that first impression will really, it can be almost a yay or nay without them having to read any bit, anything more on your website or on that webpage. Yeah. And like you said before, it's, I mean, people think of headlines. It's think of all the areas where you, you could be using a headline. So whether, like you said, it's a blog, it could be a, a social media post, it could be the subject line in an email. I mentioned to you off air that the amount of times I will close an email and not even read it, or I will read an email based on how good 
that that subject line is. And I've noticed that myself when I do my email newsletters. The headline of the newsletter has made a huge difference to the amount of sort of newsletters that are opened compared to ones that aren't. Because I could put a headline that means a lot to me, but when you read it, if it doesn't mean anything, just I'll bypass it. I remember a newsletter we did with our patients, and one of them, the most popular newsletter we did, the headline was Bunions and Onions. Why, I don't know, but it must have just been people saw that and then went, that is interesting, bunions and onions. And we were talking about bunions, of course, was one of the main articles, but we also had an onion recipe, this recipe that had a lot of onions in it. But it was surprising how many people opened that. And when I had patients come through and I said to them, oh, did you see our email? They went, oh, bunions and onions. Yeah, saw that one. <laughs> that it, it stood out. And even though we didn't use catchy words or anything in, there was just like, two crazy sort of things that you would actually put together. It just works. So that's why I think it's just really important for people to realize headlines aren't just in your, your advertising, your marketing. It's anywhere where you're communicating with a patient, you can use a good or a catchier headline to get their attention. I think we get so much, so many emails these days, right? If something it doesn't look either unique, like bunions and onions or... Yeah. Something that has a clear benefit for us to open it and explore further. I think sometimes with some people do their own marketing, right? They're trying to get their own message out there from their own perspective or the clinic's point of view. But really part of this exercise in headlines is standing what the patient's needs are. Um, and then, like you said, either creating some awareness through some creative ways of writing um, with some creative headlines or mm. really fo focusing on the benefits, the types of services um, in a unique way, right? It's not just like, you know, make appointment at uh, Tyson Franklin Podiatry or th those things are just going to get either deleted at best and at work, you're going to be reported for maybe spamming people because they're just like, that. people don't want to see that in their inbox. And even if they had opted in to receive your newsletter, if it's too overtly sales oriented, it's going to turn people off. Yeah. And there's certain words that I know that my email filter will grab hold of if they you put the word rich in there, or is it, there's certain keywords. I was going to say something else. If there's certain, and not that we would put that in an email normally, but somebody's just going to be careful of certain words you think are safe words that are actually being flagged that no, they are normally attached to spam. So if you're finding, you're talking to patients who go, no, I didn't get your email, try and find out, are they going to the junk? Is it being, is it being tagged that way? But what I thought would be interesting is have a bit of fun with explaining the structure of how headlines work and certain keywords. And I've written down a few here that uh, are used and people, when they hear some of these will go, ah, yes, I've seen these things used before. And then it'll actually make sense. So first one I want to say is numbers make your headline catchier. So you could just say, yeah, how to fix your heel pain because that seven ways to fix your heel pain. Or five ways. I did an article recently and it was seven and a half questions you should ask your business coach. So not only seven, there were seven and a half questions, a little half question in there that people had to identify. So you, you would have seen the numbers before, Jim? Yeah, definitely. It's, it just, it's more visually stimulating to see something instead of just a bunch of letters to have that number there. And then with you adding on that seven and a half is going to cause even more what is this half thing doing there? So it, it's both visually, it's more visually appealing, but it's also like a bit of a question or a bit of a, what's, what are they getting at there? So I think there are some, some interests that can be piqued by, like you said, not only what you say, but the way you type it out and the way it's visually there in the headline can make definitely a different type of experience or make something more intriguing for sure. Especially if you had something that said five ways to do whatever. The next thing someone's gone. 25 ways to do something. You go, my God, I thought there were only five ways. So the numbers just make you realize, okay, there's just not one way to skin a cat. Yeah, there's more ways to skin a cat. So to me, putting numbers there makes them realize, oh, I have options here on how I can actually help heal pain or whatever the problem is. Another thing that they reckon is using what they call engaging words. So reasons, tips, secrets, hacks are examples. So if you went seven secrets, of yeah, preventing heel pain, people go, ooh, secrets. 
these aren't the things that everybody else knows. These are secrets or seven hacks. It means it's like a bit of a shortcut or seven tips or seven reasons why you should do something. So they reckon that just, it gets people more engaged in just, you could have seven ways to do something, but if you gave seven secrets to do something, they reckon that actually attracts people a little bit more. Yeah, I think there's the reason why we're coming to see a podiatrist or search for podiatrists online in the first place is they are looking for those those reasons or those tips, right? Otherwise, sometimes they're looking to do it themselves, but other times they're looking to have an expert explain to them what's happening and what are the options mm. to, to getting better. So I think you're right that we have to lay out those reasons or those things that they couldn't find out for themselves in a way that makes sense. It's appealing because it emphasizes that you've already thought about these things or you're the expert and you've organized it in a way to help them not only maybe even in the clinic, but the, the blog post or the email you sent out, you spent time providing that information and providing them some value. Definitely. And the next thing, next word they can use is what they call shortcut words, which is like easy, simple. So you could say seven, you actually use the word shortcut, seven shortcuts to preventing heel pain or seven easy ways to treat heel pain. So straight away, people go, oh, good, because I'm not looking for the seven hard ways to treat my heel pain. I want the easy ways. I want the shortcut. I want it fixed faster. So they reckon that's really important. The other one is using what they call trigger words, which is using the words how, why, what, and when. So that's, that sort of will trigger people that actually want to know a little bit more. And I love this one too, creating intrigue, myths, lies, and proven. So you have seven secret ways or seven proven ways, or it could be five myths behind incorrect footwear. So people are going, once again, it's, ooh, there's myths, it's like the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, they want to like, people realize that some of the things they do are maybe, maybe the best way to treat things. So when you could bust some of those myths or uh, go against the normal conventions or kind of some, what people feel like is common sense that may not actually be common sense, it definitely will connect with some folks. Yeah, I like how they call it. They're like intrigued. So if you said, yeah, five lies you've been told by your general practitioner. I tell you, people, even I reckon podiatrists, I read that in a podiatry article and said, five lies you've been told by the university. Podiatrists would go, well, actually, <laughs> I might use that in my next newsletter. I might put that in there, five lies and see, see what the open rate is. That would be interesting. <laughs> Another one here they've got is use emotion. So if you... Uh, we'll say guaranteed methods to do such and such. People go, oh, good, this is guaranteed. So therefore it must work. And I think it goes back to the other word, creating intrigue, where you use the word proven. There's seven proven strategies to prevent bunions or yeah, reduce bunion pain. So those type of things get people thinking about a bit more. But also I reckon if you use an emotional word, is going back before when we mentioned premium and budget, they are emotional words. So if you go such and such product providing a premium service or a budget service, that actually creates a bit of emotion. Pain-free or back to activities. Like you said, we need to connect emotionally with them and give some reassurance through some of these ways of writing headlines. They can be a very powerful thing. Yeah. Another emotional one was like fun ways to whatever the headline is going to be. So it could be, yeah, five fun ways to reduce your heel pain. And people go, good, easy. I want could be five easy fun ways so you're thinking okay i want to get rid of my heel pain wouldn't be it's awesome if they can make this fun and it's not going to be not fun right. what, what would be the opposite of fun injections five ways to avoid <laughs> a heel injection right if people are avoiding needles is a big fear for some people so if you can even not scare them emotionally but just say they'll if you do these things maybe you don't have to get a shot you'll probably get people opening that up i would say <laughs> yeah avoid surgery and then it's got here, use urgency words or something that's relevant, which is like today, now, fast. Now, like I said, when people listen to this particular episode, if you go back and listen to it again and actually take notes while you're listening to this one. If you're in the car, don't do it while you're driving. But when you get home, listen to it again, take notes, and then go to grab a magazine, go to a newspaper, jump online, and you have a look at headlines that people use and you'll see how... They basically do it. And this is where you can actually learn the best way of doing things is when I'm doing my workshop, I will actually, if I'm doing it live, I get, a, I have a whole pile of old magazines and I just get people going through it and they look at an original headline and they rewrite it to suit themselves. And then I go around the room and you get people to actually start sharing 
uh, some, what some of the headlines have come up with. And when you're doing it in a workshop environment, it is just amazing. And the feedback, usually afterwards I ask people, how did you find this? And they'll go, one of the best things and most useful things they actually go through. Now you can do it yourself and it'll be beneficial, but if you can do it with a group of people, it actually uh, works even better. Last thing I wanted to say on this though, is you can combine all these things together. So you can get, yeah, seven proven ways to avoid heel pain that you need to take action now. So it's actually combining all the different types of words together. And one of the best industries that I think do it than anywhere else is the dental industry. You have a look at dental ads and they tend to do it really well. Yeah, I definitely have seen them and even chiropractors at times, at least in the US, they, oh. they use a lot of copy, like highly skilled copywriters to, like you said, utilize those words that they kind of provoke action and provoke people to, like you said, either think that's the right place for them or not the right place and just move forward with things as opposed to just, I think even when we're in school, whether it's high school, university, podiatry school, writing is something we're always doing, but to really look mm -hmm. at it from a strategic and like a marketing perspective is like something that, like you said, takes some practice, whether it's at a, at a you know, conference or at a workshop with you, or just paying a little more close attention to newspaper headlines or advertisement headlines just seeing how they're utilizing words and the ways that they're trying to drive specific types of action or behaviors. Once you realize there is that level of kind of tactics or just like being very specific about what they want to get from uh, an advertisement, I think you can really utilize it in your own practice in a way to help other people. It's not just to line your own pockets, but it is provided great care for the people in your local community. Yeah. And this is a skill that you don't learn once. And then go, okay, now I know it. It's something you just, you just keep, you constantly working on it. So I have to, yeah, yeah. pay a lot of respect to Dave Freeze, who I was at his event in Arizona that we did this the first time, just going through headlines. And then I've dug into this a little bit deeper and I've added a lot of my own information. But every year we go back to Arizona, we do this as a group, as a workshop every single year. And every time we do it, you learn something new. Or somebody will say something, you go, wow, that's a great way of looking at that. And you write notes down. So I've gone through this myself with other, I've done it in workshops with at least half a dozen groups. I've done it myself in Arizona at least five times. And like I said, I never get bored doing it because it's always new. You can look at a magazine, you can look at a, a front page of a magazine today, look at that same page in years time, and you'll see something completely different because you, just depending on how your brain is actually thinking. So. I think it's a task that you can do yourself. You can get a group of people and do it. If you've got a team at work, get your team together. And this is one of your meetings. Have a meeting on creating headlines. Look at all the stuff you've done in the past and go, oh, I wonder why that social media post got one minute from my mum. It's because you, probably the headline was crap. So you might get that same post, go back, change the headline and repost it and see what happens. And there will definitely be a difference. Or talk to you and I. So I was going to say that if people want to know more about how to actually do this and they want to say, just work on it is contact you or contact me and we can run through this stuff with them in a lot more detail. No, that's a great idea. I think one of the cheat codes that I use, and this is related to headlines is what are those competitive markets in your country? Like for me being in North America, New York, San Francisco, LA, those are the places where you're going to have a lot of local business comp. What I'll yeah. sometimes do is whether it's a plumber, whether it's a, a roofing company, whether it's somewhere, look up like San Francisco roofing company, look up San Francisco banking, San Francisco plumber, and see what are those like, what kind of ads, like whether it's Google ads or whatever pops up in Google, like what, is, and you're restricted by the number of words you can use on either a Google ad or a headline, but like what really connects, right? Mm -hmm. Like people aren't going to be spending a ton of money on, well, hopefully on these ads if they're not working. So it's a way to like, See what's working out there in different industries and then craft it with your own message for your own patients. But yeah, I'll, that's the fun thing about this is that all this stuff is out there. It's almost something you don't really see until you realize it. It's almost like an invisible thing that you're just bombarded with, like from other sources until you realize that this is something you can flip and turn around to your own benefit, to benefit your clinic, yourself and your patients. And then once you see it, you're like, oh. I like that from this magazine ad or this from this article or 
from this online advertisement or this headline. And then you just make it your own. But like you said, Tyson, it, it's all about being consistent and practicing. That's the thing about me now. I'm, since I'm not practicing anymore, I'm doing all this marketing. I can really like, yeah. I, I write so much more than I used to. And the more you write, the better you get at these things. And whether it's with Tyson in a workshop or it's a different type of workshop or a conference you go to, or maybe by yourself with a small group of people, practice, practice what's all about. Uh, it's incredible the amount of times I've gone through this and people who have come up to me afterwards and said, you have just saved me a ton of money. They said, we were just about to send out something or do some ads and, and we're looking at what we're about to do. And they've shown me on their computer because we'll say be at a, a conference. They go, we were about to send this out. And just looking at that now, we realize this is rubbish. And they've just made a couple of little tweaks and then sent me an email a week later and gone, just so glad <laughs> we actually turned up on that day to hear that. And like you said, all this information is right in front of us. We don't realize, that's how you know this works. It's because copywriters have been putting this in front of us for so many years now, and we have been attracted to it for one reason or another, and we have taken action on what these copywriters have put in front of us. And that's the whole purpose. <laughs> they write this for us to take action. They don't write it just for, sh what do they call it? Shit and giggles. Yeah, so that's all I want, really wanted to say on this subject was really just get people thinking about if you're about to send a newsletter, blog, do some form of advertise, wherever it is, just think about the headline, give it a little bit more thought before you just put it out. Look at things you've done in the past. If it's not working, there's no harm in reworking it and, and reusing it. Couldn't agree more, Tyson. This is a, a great lesson, and I hope uh, people take away some of those pearls that you shared today. I think it will definitely level up some people's headlines on the website, email marketing. It's a lot of uses. Good writing can really provide somebody's practice. No, that's great. I absolutely love this topic. Sounds great, Tyson. Bye now. Okay, bye.